Today, we'll be discussing on stands and staining techniques. So microorganisms, as they are transparent when suspended in the aqueous medium, are difficult to examine under the light microscope and therefore they are stained to increase visibility and to reveal various information to identify microbes. So the chemical substances that is used to stain bacteria are known as dyes. Each dye is composed of three components, that is benzene ring, chromophore, and oxychrome. So this benzene ring is the colorless part of the dye and is the basic structural component of the dye, while chromophore is the functional group of a dye that gives color to the stain, and oxychrome is the group that gives the ionic property to the stain. The benzene ring and the chromophore is collectively known as chromogen. The dyes that is used to stain the bacterial cells have two features in common. That is, they have chromophore groups that have conjugated double bones that give the dye its color. And the dyes can bind with the cell by ionic, covalent or hydrophobic bonding. So now we'll come to dyes. So these dyes are classified into three general classes based on the nature of their charge group. They are, the first one is basic dye. Basic dyes are cationic or they have positively charged group. They bind to the negatively charged molecules like nucleic acids and proteins. As bacterial cell surfaces are negatively charged, basic dyes are most often used in bacteriology. Some examples of the basic dyes include methylene blue, basic fusin, crystal violet, malachite green, etc. Now we'll come to acid dyes. In contrast, acidic dyes are anionic or possess negatively charged groups and because of their negative charge, they bind to the positively charged cell structures. And some of the acidic dyes are eosin, Ross Banigal and acid fusion. Next is the neutral dyes. Neutral stain is a salt of acidic and basic stain and they colored both the anionic and the cationic cell structures such that the net charge is neutral. One of the example is Jimsa stain. Now we'll come to the types of staining. Generally, there are two types of staining procedures that is the simple staining and the differential staining techniques. Simple staining employs a single dye, for example, methylene blue or crystal violet, and the cell structures within the cell attain the color of the stain, while in case of differential staining, these are more elaborate than the simple staining in that the cells will be exposed to more than one stain. Further, differential staining is used to distinguish organisms that are based on their staining procedures. So first we'll see the simple staining. In simple staining, the cells are stained by the application of a single staining reagent and hence they are also known as the monochrome staining. 
The purpose of simple staining technique is to determine the shape, size and arrangement of the bacterial cell. In this technique, the fixed smear is covered with a stain for the proper length of time and further washes off the excess stain with water and blots the slide dry. So basic dyes like the crystal violet, methylene blue and carbyl fusion, they are used frequently in simple staining. Next is the differential staining. Differential staining is so called because it divides the bacteria into separate groups that are based on their staining properties. The different types of differential staining includes the first one is the gram staining. The gram staining technique was named after a Danish physician Dr. Hans Christian Gram in the year 1884 who originally developed the technique. Gram staining is also known as differential staining because it divides the bacteria into two classes. The first one is gram positive and the another one is the gram negative. The technique is based on the ability of the bacterial cell wall to retain the primary stain crystal violet during solvent treatment. The cell walls for gram positive microorganism have a higher peptidoglycan and lower lipid content than the gram negative bacteria. During gram staining, the smear is stained with the basic dye that is crystal violet followed by treatment with an iodine solution also known as the grams iodine which function as a mordant. So treatment with the iodine solution forms the crystal violet iodine complex which is also known as the CVI complex which increases the interaction between the cell and the dye so that the cell is stained more strongly. Subsequently, the smear is washed with a decolorizer that is 95% ethanol. Then the treatment with the decolorizer, it dissolves the lipid layer from the gram negative cells. This removal of the lipid layer, it enhances the leaching of the primary stain from the cells into the surrounding solvent. In contrast, the solvent it dehydrates the thick layer of the gram positive cell wall which closes the pores as the cell wall shrinks during dehydration and hence the diffusion of the CVI complex is blocked and the cells remain purple. This step it generates the differential aspect of the gram stain that is the gram positive bacteria it retains the crystal violet whereas the gram negative bacteria it closes the crystal violet and becomes colorless. Finally a counter stain which is known as saffronin is applied to the smear to give the decolorized gram negative bacteria a pink color. So next is acid fast staining. Another important staining technique is the acid fast staining. It was developed by Paul Elrich in the year 1882, which was later modified by Jill Nielsen. So most of the microorganisms are easily stained by the simple staining procedure. But some bacteria, those in the genus Mycobacterium, cannot be easily stained because they have a waxy covering on its surface which is known as mycolic acid which is a group of a branched chain hydroxyl lipids and it is due to the high lipid content in the cell wall this cell wall has less permeability and hence they don't get decolorized even when exposed to strong acids in acid fast tanning the bacterial smear is treated with carbyl fusion which is followed by the heat fixing and treatment with acid alcohol and methylene blue. 
Once the acid first bacteria get stained, they do not decolorize and appear red in color. But the non acid first organism, it gets decolorized and get stained by the counter stain methylene blue and it appear blue in color. Acid first staining, it differentiates the organism as acid first and the non acid first organism. The organism that stained by acid first staining technique but don't get decolorized even by strong acid treatment is the acid first organism. Whereas those that are decolorized easily by strong acids are the non acid first organisms. Now we'll come to staining specific structures. So bacteria, they have a variety of additional structures that function in protection, attachment, or cell movement. These structures are stained by different staining techniques. So which includes, the first one is capsule staining. Some bacterial cells, they are surrounded by a mucilaginous substances forming a viscous coat outer to the cell wall known as capsule. Capsules are composed mostly of polysaccharides but also possess other materials like the polydeglutamic acid and some of the organisms that possess capsule include Klebsiella pneumonia, Neisseria meningitis, Haemophilus influenza, etc. Capsule helps bacteria resist phagocytosis by the phagocytic cells and also they contain a great deal of water that protect bacteria against desiccation. Resistance to phagocytosis is achieved as they are very smooth and has a negative charge that prevents the attachment. For some bacteria, Capsules serve as the major virulence factor. Capsules are usually stained by a simplest technique known as the negative staining. In this type of staining, the background but not the bacterium is stained by the use of an acidic stain which carries a negative charge on its surface and is repelled by the bacteria that too carry a negative charge on their surface. In this bacteria, they are mixed with an Indian ink or necrosin dye and spread out in a thin film on a slide. After air drying, bacteria appear as a light bodies in the midst of the blue-black background because Indian ink and dye particles, they cannot penetrate either the bacterial cell or the capsule and of the cell itself. Next, we'll see the endospore staining. So bacteria usually they grow and multiply under favorable environmental conditions. However, because of certain unfavorable condition, for example, nutrient depletion, extreme temperature, etc., bacteria are capable of changing into dormant structures that are metabolically inactive and cannot reproduce which is called the endospores. These structures are remarkably resistant to heat, radiation, chemicals, etc. Endospore forming members of the genera are Bacillus, Clostridium, Coxilla, D. sulfotomaculum, Sporolactobacillus, Sporomosa, and Thermoactinomycetes. Endospore morphology and location, it vary with species and are often valuable in identification. The main purpose of endospore staining is to differentiate bacterial spores from other vegetative cells and to differentiate spore formers from the non-spore formers. In endospore staining, the primary stain, that is the malachite grain, it is applied on the bacterial smear and steamed 
to enhance penetration of the impermeable spore coats. Further, the rest of these cells are washed free of dye with water and it is counter stained with saffronin. The endospores, once stained, does not readily decolorize and appear green within red cells. Next is flagella staining. Bacterial flagella are defined thread like appendages mostly composed of the protein flagellin which originates in the cytoplasm and projects out from the cell wall. They are responsible for bacterial motility and this motility it plays an important role in survival and ability of certain bacteria to cause the disease. They are about 20 to 30 nanometer in diameter and 15 to 16 nanometer in length. Bacteria shows four types of flagellation pattern. So the first one is monotrichus. In this, bacteria possess a single flagellum at one end. Second one is lophotrichus. Lophotrichus are those having a cluster of flagella at one end. Third one is amphitrichus. Amphitrichus are those that possess flagella at both the ends, either in single or cluster. Finally, peritrichus. These are those flagella which are present all over the surface of the bacterial cell. So as flagella are so slender, they can be observed directly under the electron microscope. And to observe under the light microscope, the thickness of the flagella must be increased. And to achieve this, the cells are coated with the Lefsen stain. Lefsen stain is made up of tannic acid, basic fusion stain, which are prepared in alcohol base. During staining, tannic acid in the stain, it gets attached to the flagella and the alcohol gets evaporated. After evaporation of the alcohol, the thickness of the flagella is increased due to deposition of tannic acid and the basic fusion stains, the flagella. Finally, the cells are treated with methylene blue which stains the cell. Under the microscope, flagella appear red and the bacterial cells appear blue in color. So flagella staining technique, it provides taxonomically valuable information about the presence and the distribution pattern of flagella. So that was about the types of stains and the different staining techniques used in observing microbes. As we all know from the above discussion that bacteria are so small that they are visible only under the microscope. However, magnification of the size does not provide a sufficient degree of clarity and hence because of this the bacteria must therefore be stained before observation to provide the clarity that is needed for visualization of cells and cellular structure. By the use of various staining methods, it is possible to identify structural features that help in classifying bacteria.